Hey guys, how you doing today? Welcome to uh, the next episode in a series we're doing about this arch craft arch top uh, that was made in the 1930s, somewhere between 1933 and 1937, by the K Company. Now we've fixed a hole. We've fixed a crack or two. I can't even find it. The repair was that good, uh, and now. We have, in the last episode, put some binding. We replaced the celluloid binding on this thing. And this episode is about taking this binding that we put on and detailing it at the end. And you're going to find out that a lot of this work is going to be common sense work using tools that you either have already or that you can make in a couple of minutes. So it's common sense work. So, speaking of common sense, I swear sometimes common sense defies some people. And so, the matchbook of the episode, believe this or not, who is the last business or group do you think would put out a matchbook? I know you're, I know that you're thinking of it, but you're like, there ain't no way. Well, yeah, there is a way. This one is definitely worth the pointer. The American Cancer Society matchbook is the matchbook of the episode. Come on, really? Think that one out. I want you to think that one out if you're smoking still, because I used to smoke two, two and a half packs a day, running equipment in the oil fields, and uh, no, that is not using common sense. So let this one sink in if it hasn't already. Moving right along, now, I will tell you uh, a place that I generally find lacks common sense, and that is record stores. Uh, first, they were in business, then they went out of business, now they're back in business. So you run across these record stores, they've got reprints of stuff, and it's all $35 and $20 and whatever and you go in there and you dig and dig that's the worst part about record stores you're digging through albums you may or may not find one well hey guess what use your head on what i'm going to tell you now i found somebody that's got a record store that's got some common sense and that's wayne tarasoff wayne tarasoff over in quartz hill california that is go halfway in between Palmdale and Lancaster in the area of Avenue, say, L, and go west, young man, and you will find Wayne at Full Score Music. Full Score Music. Now, when you walk in there, you're going to see there's all kinds of record albums and there's a few guitars and stuff. In fact, you may go in there one of these days and find something like this that I made on the wall, and then you'll have to deal with Wayne Tarasoff to see if you can get it out of his hands. I'll tell you what I got out of his hands just yesterday was John Lee Hooker, the real folk blues. John Lee Hooker, the real folk blues. Try and get this one for less than $70. Thanks, Wayne. You give me a good deal on this one. Shout out to my friend Wayne Tarasoff at Full Score Music, Quartz Hill, California. All right, back to the issue at hand. You can see that that binding, I cut away a little bit right there, but that binding is sticking up about a quarter of an inch or four millimeters. Gotcha, metricator. Anyway, we need to trim this binding down and get it level and looking good and get it where it doesn't snag up. So let's hit the bench. I'm going to show you a couple things we can do here, and then I'm going to get this binding right so we can turn around and get the binding on the other side and do the pickups and stuff we're going to do. So, let's hit the bench. Okay, first, you might hear that heater running in the background. This shop is getting chilly. It might even snow here tomorrow. We're at 3,000 foot elevation, uh, and it snows sometimes once or twice a year in the wintertime. But I do not need this guitar to be stiff and chilly. So, looking at what we have to do here, yep. It's about four millimeters high, uh, this binding here. So we're going to cut this off. Now, I could have got binding that was cut to size or something like that, uh, but 
I want to have some room to play. You want to remember on these old guitars, they warp out and the likelihood that everything is perfect all the way down there is low. Common sense again, use your head. So, if I were to go along and measure this all the way around, I might find that it varies. So, let's say it's a little bit high here and low over here. Well, in the binding and working the binding and smoothing it out at the end, I can cover for that and make it all look good and uniform. Now, what we don't want to do, and you can tell this guitar is tore up, it's got some marks and issues and stuff here, and it's a little dried out from us working this edge. Well, I'm going to show you a couple of tricks about that, but we don't want to tear this up any more than it's tore up already. And we are going to depend on the body itself to work as a guide for the tools that we're going to use to cut the binding. So we don't want to be digging into the top. So the first thing we're going to do is tape off the work area. Now I want you to notice I have a rag up there and the reason for that is guitars are great places to serve as tables when you're working for them and you might forget. So I get in the habit of doing this kind of stuff and and that way that rag will protect everything. But I'm going to take short pieces of tape and I'm going to run on the inside edge of that binding and around the curves and these tight radiuses, radii, excuse me, forget how intelligent y'all are and what high expectations you have for me. We're just going to go along like this and following the edge of the body we're going to put a protection layer here because when we go to cut this we don't want our tool digging in to the body here we certainly don't want to be working something that's so long remember this is flat here and it comes up that's why we call it an arch top so y'all go find something to do while i go all the way around with our painter tape okay there we go we got a protective layer all the way around you can see it's sticking uh, the binding sticking up we're gonna have to cut this and this will protect the edge of the body as we do our work you want to remember when you're using tape to go around a radius that it's gonna pop up a little bit you don't want any of these high spots in the tape to be such that it affects your work when you're using the edge of the guitar as a guide so just remember that make sure that those get pushed down you can even take another piece of tape and put it over the top one and you might actually find that maybe there's a little tree right over in this area right here with a happy cloud all right so let's move our guitar out of the way a little bit and all this padding i've had because i am a very proficient filmmaker and i have set up a lot of the tools that we're going to need for this Ooh, look at that pan Wow. Hey, Steven Spielberg, do not covet my film work. Okay, these are some tools that you can use to pull that binding down uh, pretty quick. I'm going to start off with a really old tool that a lot of people don't know about. It's called a spoke shave. And you can use these for necks or whatever, but it basically goes, you're using it like this, pulling it towards you like a draw knife. But it's like a plane it's got a blade underneath here and what you do let me take this apart quick we're getting way off out in the weeds but I'm gonna loosen this up and I'm gonna take this off it's gonna come in handy for you I can pop that off and I can take the blade off now I've got a piece of 600 grit paper here and I, I want you to look at the edge of that blade there you see and then I'm going to take it and lay it on here like so and just do this. There's a reason I'm showing you this because we can do this with another tool. But you see that? See that shiny edge? I'm going to take it up and tilt the other way here like so. And we're going to keep the blade on this clean because if you're using something like that, yeah, there we go. If you're using something like this and you get kinks and edges on there, you see that there's some of that isn't, you're not seeing that edge being uniform all the way across. 
when you see it all the way across you know that it's going to cut cleanly look at that see that so we put this back together like so those grooves right there I put this back on I tighten that up so it doesn't slip and I can basically set the depth on this see by turning these things up or down make it cut a lot deeper like so but this is called a spoke shave I am in the market for a very small spoke shave that will work very good for this this would work to cut a bunch down quick it works great on neck so um, put that one away up here okay the next thing I want to show you is a friend of the world's smallest vacuum and a regular guess the world's smallest blower is this world's smallest plane this is called a finger plane it's basically used like this and you take wood off of edges like this very small amounts we're going to use this to get a run on the edge of the binding after we've cut a bunch off again it has a blade see that and we can do the same thing here this is why I showed you all of that look at that see you can tell that it's sharp if you don't have this uniform and you put this back in here and again this is adjustable see watch see that popping out I can adjust the takeoff a very small amount and then tune it down and then just basically take my finger and go along the binding once a lot of it is down and over a big area and take it down to where it can be fine-tuned with a scraper finger plane now I showed you this one before it's one that I made you saw it in the episode when we were getting uh, the guitar ready for the binding um, there is a playlist up there right about now popping up that will show you all these episodes but we basically took a half inch dowel took it to the bandsaw cut a groove in it then put one of these blades in it like so drilled a hole guys invest in a decent set of bits that have numerous ones that you can tell when they're getting low you just replenish them and imagine common sense says that the size of these bits oh yeah this is worth the pointer if anything is is written right there where you can tell what you're dealing with instead of that mess that most of us have going on anyway took the size bit that I would use to put a screw in for a tuner and I drilled a hole at the top of the slot that I cut here and put that's right a chick flick teal screw in there and ended up with this this is great you can put your finger back here you don't want to put it up here of course but you can use this to follow the contour of the body and shave this down now that's not where we start we start with heavy work and heavy work starts with something like this where we can just pop this out lay this along the top of the guitar body and pull um, these work but look how flimsy these are I like the heavier one and finally the most intricate of all tools oh we're getting out of control here a couple things this is a band off of a tree box when we move trees out here we put them in boxes and people buy them so you take a banding a piece of banding and you cut this 45 here like so and then you round the tip off and then you bevel each side so you can go along and use it as a scraper see that wood coming up there you can see the chick flick teal there should be a crime defacing chick flick teal but you can see it there it's going to be 
some of the final work on the binding. Make one of these, drill a hole in it. I still have to do that with your fancy drill bit set and hang it where you can get to it. You'll use it a lot. Finally, the edge of your binding needs to be polished. And so you take this, this is 600 grit here. I have 400 grit. And you know that we use this kind of stuff for our bottlenecks. I thought I had one up here, but anyway, it's from Reuben Lacey's junkyard and I don't want you to covet it, but bottlenecks get shined up. The edges are made smooth with sandpaper going up to even 2000 grit. So what I want you to do is take a cut off from a fingerboard. I want you to wrap, cut it down to size. I want you to wrap this around it, getting everything tight and up against the wood. And take one of these little office clamps like so and clamp it on there. Flip those down and you've got a sanding block that's going to work out just right. You can see it working there. And this is the kind of stuff we're going to use to get these edges right. Okay guys, before we put the guitar up, again I've got rags to pad everything or whatever, but I want to point something out here. A lot of people never figure out that there's holes in these benches and there's pegs that come with these benches. Or, uh, yeah, they come with the benches that drop down the hole. Imagine that. Now let's say that I want to stabilize something like a guitar while I'm having to cut on it. I can use these holes in these pegs with something wrapped around them. I could put a piece of tape or something to hold the body, but I'm going to need this, the guitar body to be solid while I'm moving it around. So remember that these holes are in your bench and that's what they're for. Okay, we are going to put the guitar up here now. And um, there is a guitar stand that I've seen a manufacturer makes. And um, I am actually thinking about getting one because it would be so handy to have this guitar up where you can work on it and spin it around because you're going to need the angle here when you're working on this because this is an area where you want to be pulling towards you, not working sideways and, and gouging in. So I got an idea. Why don't take, we take our great fret pliers and do this. Now, why don't we not do that? Because everywhere you cut, in addition to ruining these, everywhere you cut, there's going to be a different edge and something to work out later. So, we're going to start off with the most basic tool. We're going to flip this open, enough to be covered by the tape. And we're just going to get a good hold, like so. And we're just going to go along and work down the guitar body like this. You want to be careful because if this slips, you don't want to cut your arm off. Anyway, I'm going to go down the whole body and work this down to a level that's fairly close and then I'll show you the next step. Okay guys, you can see that this isn't rocket science. Now, when you get start to get down to the end, and you're starting to get smooth with the body, and you're using the scraper and the sandpaper, you want to remember that working one little area isn't going to help you. You want to do longer runs, even with the sandpaper, because 
that is going to help these individual spots blend in with each other. Remember to keep everything masked off and just keep going at it till it's smooth to the touch. You can feel if something's not right and having this piece of wood like this with a lot of different sides available helps you get where you need to be. Remember this is an old junky guitar. It's never going to be perfect, but do the best you can to make it look good. Now I'm going to go all the way around and do this monotonous type work for a while till we're done and then I'll say see ya at the end. Okay guys, we have been all the way around and I'm going to tell you what, I think your best friends are going to be the tools we made ourselves including this one that rides the body and keeps the radius right and go all the way around and this is pulling up a little bit here but you can't really see it that much you just follow it around like so next I think this piece of metal tree banding or banding whatever you want to call it that's had one end sharpened or 45 then sharpened up and rounded off this has come in really really handy doesn't look like it does too much but every time you go around and go a long ways it pulls off those little filings that are going to smooth everything out like so then finally the hero of the day is this 400 grit paper on a fretboard cut off. It can turn any number of ways. You got to keep that clip out of the way. But you're basically looking to have it match the radius everywhere and feel smooth to the player. Of course, this tape protecting everything really, really important. But there we go. A little bit of cleanup to do, but. Oh, that's looking good. All right, guys. You know what? I am really happy with the way that turned out. Um, I've still got to do the front. Going to put a pickup on here, but um, you'll see this one pop up here and there. But you know what? It wasn't really as hard as it was uh, made out to be. A little tedious. I mean, handmade tools came in really handy. Handmade tools came in really handy. That's profound, right? Um, I do want to give a shout out to a couple people. Again, my friend Wayne Tarasoff at Full Score Music. Got me a good John Lee Hooker collectible album there. It's not like I don't have any John Lee Hooker, but unless you have this one, you don't have John Lee Hooker. And now it's just the next one I don't have will be. But hey, Wayne, thanks a lot for having a good selection and being fair with your prices and then finally I want to give a shout out to my friends at Antique Asylum over there in the Antelope Valley Antique Asylum they got good tools in there amongst all their plethora of antiques I'm going to give you a link below to all that so thanks for watching guys I'm hoping this will help you out and motivate you because if I can do it it kills me to say this anybody can uh, don't forget to give me a like and subscribe if you haven't, and I will see you next time.